through my workings with uh, many robotic parts and students, I've come to understand the law of entropy or the tendency of the world to go towards a state of disorder unless you put work into it and or verbally abuse uh, your students. And that all relates to the second law of thermodynamics, which we will discuss in this along with entropy and disorder. Now please read what this says up here in 10.3.1. Maybe states the obvious that you're not going to have uh, heat energy flowing from cold things into hot things. It may not actually violate the conservation of energy. Let's say you've got a glass of water at room temperature, but then suddenly it just turns into ice. And that extra heat that it got rid of, maybe it dumps that out into the room and the room becomes warmer. Energy is still conserved because that energy went somewhere and left this missing some energy turned into ice. Another situation that wouldn't violate, that let's say you've got uh, food that's been sitting out and it's at room temperature and it's all cold and sad, but then suddenly some air from the room or some heat energy jumps into your food and makes the food hotter and the room a little bit colder. Also, would not violate the laws of conservation of energy, but it would violate uh, what seems to always happen in life, naturally, and that's the second law of thermodynamics, as stated by Clausius. Take a minute, pause it, and write this down. He's just stating the obvious that things always flow from hot to cold. It never goes in reverse naturally, unless you do some work on it. You may think, ha ha, I violate the law, the second law of thermodynamics every day, because I come home, and in my cold food area, I put some warm cans of soda. And then, from the cold food area, the fridge heat pump steals heat from them and dumps it into the hotter kitchen out the back of the fridge. Ba-boom, I violated the second law, and heat has flowed spontaneously from cold to hot. Well, my friends, that is wrong. That is not true. What has had to happen is that your fridge heat pump has had to do some work. And that work has gone in here to make the temperature, uh, to make the heat energy flow from the cold into the hot. And it turns out that the amount of heat energy you stole from the food, the amount of heat energy that gets dumped out the back is actually bigger because that work also has to come out the back to keep the violet law of energy conservation from being violated. So, no violation of the second law of thermodynamics with your refrigerator or heat pump. Now, you need to understand what entropy is. Entropy is disorder in a system, or how much disorder you have in a system. Uh, things that are more all jumbled and random, they have high entropy because they have high disorder. Now, sometimes it's best to think what things have low entropy or have high order. Whenever we see things that are sorted, like the robotics room at ISM has low entropy on a normal day because all of the different parts are sorted in their places where they are actually happiest. Uh, if you see anywhere in the natural world there's temperature differences, like a hot tub in winter, that's crazy because if you just left things as they were without electricity being pumped into it, then all the temperatures would equalize. And if you see a temperature difference, something crazy must be happening to keep it that way. Or if you have complex systems, things like robots, animals, computers, all of these things are highly ordered and they don't just happen. Some work has to go into them to keep them at a very low state of entropy. Earlier, we stated the second law of thermodynamics in terms of heat flow, because it naturally tends to go from hot to cold, not cold to hot. You can also express it in terms of entropy. And here is that second law of thermo in terms of entropy. Pause it and write this down. Now, the natural process of things is always to move from ordered to disorder. For example, you've got a uh, stack of cards here that's highly ordered in this pyramid. If you just let things go as they are, a little bit of shaking, wind comes in, you're going to end up with this situation. 
Now, it may not violate conservation of energy that if suddenly some wind came in and boom, the cards stacked themselves up in a pyramid. That would violate the laws of sanity, but it would violate the natural tendency of entropy to always go towards disorder if it is a natural process. Now, there are some natural processes that you might think violate the second law of thermodynamic in terms of entropy. We'll discuss those. Oh, by the way, entropy is represented by the letter S. No longer stands for Superman, now stands for entropy, and delta S is our change in entropy. Now, a natural process. Let's say you've got a glass of salt water uh, sitting around just hoping someone drinks it so then you can laugh at them. But uh, it's sitting around for, let's say, a couple days. Eventually, that's going to evaporate most of the water, and it's going to leave this ordered, chunky salt stuff. Now, it was dissolved. That was pretty disorderly. And now it's been separated into some liquid. Some solid stuff is sitting at the bottom. Some solid salt is now caked on the parts of the glass. You're thinking, this is more ordered. I now have solids and liquids separated. I violated the second law of thermodynamics, and entropy has decreased. It's become more ordered. Well, it turns out you didn't because sunlight or heat energy had to go in to make that happen. Uh, some of the water molecules actually then dispersed and went all over out here into the atmosphere. That became more disorderly. When the dissolved salt turned back into a solid, uh, some heat, actually Q, left the system and it made the surroundings more disorderly. So in a local system, you might have the delta S as being uh, negative. But with the surroundings and everything around here, the delta S is going to be positive, And it's going to be more positive than this negative here, so that you can still say that entropy is always increasing the universe. Our universe is always becoming more disordered. Now let's say that we've got some ice that's stored on top of a mountain. This ice is going to be stored, the energy is going to be stored in the form of gravitational potential energy. And then uh, it starts to melt, and then it turns into some water, and starts flowing downhill, and then maybe we can make it run some sort of turbine or power wheel, and that turns it into mechanical energy. That then sends it to a power station, and that turns it into uh, electrical energy, and that can then power something else, and then there's friction, and that thing slows down, and eventually all of this energy gets used. Conservation of energy is still happening, but eventually it gets dissipated due to thermal heating of the wires, resistance, maybe friction steals it and turns it into thermal energy, but eventually it becomes what we call degraded. And when it becomes degraded, it's less useful for doing anything good. <clears throat> and one of the consequences of the second law of thermodynamics and entropy is that through natural processes, if things are in a form where it can be useful to do work, it will eventually degrade into a form where it's less useful for doing work. Our universe is all moving towards a situation where all of the energy will be degraded into forms less useful for doing work. It will degrade into thermal energy as opposed to the gravitational potential and other forms that it's in right now. It's kind of sad, I know.